1932, Kumend Farm was left to the National Trust in a will of the last owner. She instructed them in a deed of gift to preserve the farm in its present condition as a private open space, pursuant to the provisions of the National Trust Act 1907. After the National Trust received the building and surrounding land, they occupied it with tenants until just a few years ago. Since then, the building has remained empty, falling into disrepair, and the land has overgrown. The most recent residents are a collective of artists, performers and volunteers who work in Reading and London. They have a background in reusing empty spaces to continue their art and environmental projects through running workshops. With Kumen Farmhouse, there's so much space, there's so much great potential for things we've been doing as setting up artists, studios and um, music recording studio. And there's always been a lot of creativity here and artists and musicians, so it's good because it, it's really set up to be like that as well. We had a, a group from the local area of uh, musicians come in the other evening and, um, and they were glad to see it opened up again. A lot of people have expressed their disappointment when to see it boarded up. We really hope that it can be used by people for temporary accommodation as well. It's been described to me before as being a, a place for people who have no place. And also we want mainly to prevent the building from falling into any further disrepair. And you can see the mold growing on the walls. We've opened the windows to try and dry the room out a bit. There's cracks that really need to be addressed <laughs> um, in the ceilings and the walls. Obviously, the longer it's left boarded up, the bigger the cracks are going to get. This is one of the major problems with the house, this big crack here. And what we think this is being caused by is that there's a TV aerial um, attached to this chimney stack. And it seems that when the wind blows, it moves it around and um, has caused this damage to the chimney. Uh, some of the old residents here have come back and they said that these things are, are surveying the cracks and that they were there before they left so that's nearly two years that they've been on the walls for and so they know, they know about the problem but nothing's been done. What I was thinking was about our civilization is that we don't value the past, we only value certain bits just as we value certain bits of green space. Now this house as far as the National Trust is concerned, won't ever make them enough money to justify any repairs, so they're in a bit of a difficult position, and I understand that. But this house has got tremendous energy. This house is part of it has been 800 years old. So when you walk down the stairs, you're connecting with everybody who ever walked down these stairs to hear bad news, good news, a happy event, running down the stairs to meet mum. All that energy is stored in the house. All this energy of these people that have lived here, loved, died, whatever here. And when you're here, you get that in you. And as a civilization, we don't value that connection to the past enough. And so this house should be saved. Well, I can completely understand that this issue of listed buildings is a problem because sometimes it almost makes more sense for the building to be left to be condemned. Um, well, it's less expense anyway and it's a really difficult position to be in because some buildings really do you know they, there is nothing you can do for them but in cases like this when you can stop things happening to the building which is actually a habitat for um, endangered bats um, and we have uh, loads of badgers here as well um, we've been very careful to to leave them to <laughs> to do their thing but <clears throat> Yeah, there's all sorts like pheasants, and this is actually a site for um, the curl bunting. bunting. Yeah, I think it's a real shame that um, the National Trust are just letting this place rot to the ground because uh, it's such a beautiful building, and they've been entrusted to look after it and maintain it in the condition that it was when it was given to them. And that's just something they're obviously not doing, and I think they're failing in their responsibility to their members and the people who pay their subscriptions. It's really letting them down when you see this, and it makes you wonder how many other properties they've got that they're just letting fall down as well. They believe without living caretakers, Kumen Farm would suffer damage beyond repair. They would offer this service free of charge, but unfortunately the National Trust would not enter into agreement 
for the group to stay there, and so the future of Kumen Farm is now uncertain.